Let's go back to Bobby Pye and my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through the NFL two game slate here on Monday. And uh, Sheets, uh, how did yesterday go for you? And then take us into today. I luck boxed a little bit. I, um, in the two game slate, which I kind of gave up for dead after the first, uh, first game, the second game wasn't really uh, producing for anybody either, apparently. And at the very end, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Justin Fields with a, with a Hail Mary touchdown to a guy that nobody had at wide receiver at tight end in the yeah. end zone, um, got me fourth in, in the bomb on FanDuel for like 2,500. So right. that was, uh, yeah, so that was pretty good. Um, but I mean, you know, with all the COVID and all the whatever, you're, you're seeing just a, a real absence of, of good, good play in general, you know, and, and so uh, fantasy points are going to be kind of hard to come by also in the, in those, in those constructs also. What do you, what do you think of, um, well, I want to talk about a little about football. I guess we could do the, um, as we get to the games, we'll get to when we talk about the Rams, but the, uh, I don't think uh, there's any clear cut favorites right now, like in football, you know, like Tampa clearly showed their, 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 their weakness, the, the, the Cardinals, who, who, you know, they show their weakness lost to Detroit. You have Green Bay, who now all of a sudden, they have a pretty good stranglehold on the home field at this point, which is kind of, that's a tough thing to, to, to deal with, you know, yeah. having to go into Green Bay a couple of times. So I guess they have to be considered somewhat the favorite. Um, and the AFC is kind of all over the place. You have, you have New England, who's a little, who's a little fishy as, you know, they're, they're, they're head of their division. And every other, look at the standings. It's a freaking war out there. Yeah. And then it's possible that the two best teams of all might not even be division winners. You know, uh, I mean, we're going to get to the Rams in a minute, but, you know, they get healthy. I mean, I can't I can't argue that they're any worse than any the teams that I just mentioned above them. Not to mention San Francisco is really strong right now. So it's um it's uh it's going to be an interesting thing. And then I totally left out probably the most likely winner. I don't know. You think the Chiefs? I mean, it's yeah. uh it's rough. Yeah. I think the Chiefs are like I think that it's one of those things where we're saying this now, but we <clears throat> once the Super Bowl comes around, if the Chiefs play San Francisco or Green Bay, it'll be pretty clear to us. We can just go, oh, they were clearly the best teams because right. the, the, the the way the Niners are playing right now, when they're with being and they were unhealthy or the early in the year, yeah. they really look like that that old Niners team that made the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. And I like I think New England is going to be a, a tough a, a, a tough out. But I, I like the Chiefs. I like. Um, I wish I had a little more confidence in my Rams. I, I do like them, but I, I see a lot of flaws, especially without Woods and their ability. He sort of negated their 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 problems with their in, in, in regards to their ability to run the ball, and that's what worries me about them. Is that I really think you want to have some sort of a running game, and I feel pretty. I'd feel pretty good if I was in Green Bay's spot if they had home field advantage throughout the AFC. That's a tough place to go to go in and win. Um, yeah. That would be my thoughts. And yeah, I, but the NFL is the NFL being the sport that it is. It's rough, man. I mean, like it's just one or two plays just can turn. And you have no dominant team, really. I didn't even mention the, the Cowboys. I mean, they haven't been as good as they were, but you never know who can get hot. Yep. Then you have these upstart teams. Like you get you get John Taylor continuing to run downhill. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like when they get into the playoffs. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a uh, boy. Uh, now the two teams that are not not particularly intriguing. For, the, for in that conversation is the first game of this slate. Um, no, but they still have playoff implications, though. Absolutely, big time implications. Yeah. Enough that they really, you know, the Redskins whine loud enough to get their game moved to Tuesday with all mm -hmm. that, and they might not even get their quarterbacks anyway. That yep. they uh, they're still waiting to hear on Heineke and Kyle Allen whether they're going to pass at four p.m. Otherwise, it's Garrett Gilbert um, at quarterback. Um, but Philadelphia, they have they have kind of the inside track on that last one and that last wild card thing. They have a nice nice schedule. They're playing home this week. They have home against Jake Fromm and probably in the Giants next week. So they they're in they're in they're in, they're in pretty good shape. Um, but again, so to to to, to again to re recap what I said yesterday about these types of slates. You know we're going to get used to these because the playoffs are coming soon. We get these two game slates. It's not exactly a showdown, but it's not exactly a full slate either. Um, so you, you can, uh, you can avoid certain rules. Like I have no problem obviously playing anybody against defenses, right? Mm -hmm. Like that, that doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't have to be as stingy about that, the grouping things like that. And then again, you don't want to get too off the board as opposed to showdowns because you're still getting regular pricing. Um, like if you like guys like, um, you know, whoever, like the guy we, <laughs> the last part I said from yesterday, you don't have to pay. If you really like them, play them at showdown at 200. Don't necessarily pay 4,000 for them or whatever it is in these mm -hmm. slates, unless, unless it makes sense. 
Um, so I guess we'll just start game by game. What do you what do you think? Of, let's let's do, go by the game. What do you think of this game in general, Washington Philly? Well, yeah, let's pull up your screen so we can we can talk. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but I, I'll, I'll say like, so I, I mean, I think this is a, it's going to be a tough spot for Washington, assuming that neither of the top two quarterbacks play. Um, it just seems like it's going to be a, tri a tricky one, and the Philadelphia defense certainly seems to make some sense. I don't understand Philadelphia in general. I don't pretend to. I, I I don't understand why one week it's ten carries for Sanders, ten for 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 Howard and Boston Scott and all that, and they get absolutely no work when they're back and activated. And Sanders gets twenty carry, twenty four carries, which I've been literally waiting the entire season for because he's been so. <laughs> right. And I, I just I, I don't. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, and because of his price, he's going to be popular. So my first thought is probably to try to fade Sanders. I know it's a little bit of a scary fade on a two game slate. And definitely to play Gibson, who's also going to be popular, but they're going to overload Gibson with work if they can. Now, of course, Philly will probably stack the box, try and make you beat them on the outside. But Gibson has some receiving equity as well. I love Goddard. Um, he's what I would do. Like if you're going to play, if you're not going to play Sanders, it would probably be logical to play one of Devontae Smith or, or Goddard. And for me, it would probably be Goddard uh, with a little bit over Smith. But I, I wouldn't, I don't have any problem with Smith. I also like McLaurin. Um, even with the, 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 the quarterback question marks, I just feel like they might even dial in, the, in on him more, which is a lot already that they already use him. So he would be my, my other one. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I, that's pretty, I don't have a ton of like interest in this game from an overall standpoint. I, I think it's, it's, it's just those guys. And my favorites being Gibson Goddard followed by, uh, Smith Sanders, and that's pretty much that's pretty what, much what about quarterback is hurt your favorite quarterback on the slate no okay i like both quarterbacks in the other game better okay but uh, yeah, I, it makes me nervous to say that because his rushing upside is so immense like uh, he's he's a, he's a good play um if you play him i would play him with just one of his receivers though I and i wouldn't mind even using the running back with him but i would rather play him with one of the receivers rather than two yeah, I'm, I'm going to probably, just for funsies, I'm going to probably play zero Sanders. Um, that's just going to be probably the stand that I take. Um, uh, he's never done anything as chalk. He very rarely does anything as non-chalk. Um, and it's a two-game slate. I mean, I'll find, you know, I, 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 I think that, you know, with the exception of game script or whatever, I, I think Gibson's an infinitely better play than, um, than Sanders. And I'll, I'll find another running back. I mean, I'll, 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 I'll play Daryl Henderson or something like that, or even Rashad Penny or something like that. I, I, I would do that as opposed to playing Sanders. Uh, that's just, I think that's just the, what, what it's going to be for me. Uh, I do like Goddard a lot. Um, so I definitely would, would prioritize him at, at the top as the top tight end position. And he, I presume is going to be the highest owned tight end, but you know, again, if I'm not playing Sanders, I could, I could, I could, I could do other stuff and not worry too much about ownership. Yep. So, so that, that that's where I'm going to be. I do have Hertz as the top quarterback, but um, and I do have the ownership between him and Stafford very similar. Um, for whatever reason, I'm getting very low ownership on Wilson, which makes no sense to me. Um, uh, so, if that's actually the case, I'm, that that that's probably going to be my favorite um, matchup. Matchup, be damned, right? Um, right. But uh, I, I do have Hertz rated as a top quarterback that mean it doesn't really make anything I think he is I think he is I think that makes sense and, and he's you know he could have a bad game and still put up a good fantasy game but yeah I, I don't feel as uh, like I don't feel like I need to play it at 60 percent ownership when I could when I actually like the quarterbacks in the other game yeah my my I guess my take on this game is is is, is I'm gonna go zero Sanders um and uh and that's really my main take <laughs> and, yeah. and Gibson is probably is clearly for me my favorite running back there's uh, i was going to temper it if somehow they got jd mckissick back yeah but he's not i mean it's yep. going to be all him and look it's going to he's had some struggles last couple of weeks mm -hmm. but you could you could make arguments in all of those games you know what i mean mm -hmm. and not that and not that this is not that they're a favorite in this game but they're not like a it's not the whole thing is just stacked against them like it was like when they're playing the rams and stuff like that right. i mean look Phil, philly gave up like a whole bunch of crap to the jets in the first half um, so it's not like the, the Eagles are freaking any, any, any barn burner defense anyway, you know? So yeah. uh, I, I think that Gibson's clearly the best running back. In yeah, I agree with, I agree with everything you said. I totally on the same page. Um, all right. Let's talk about uh, 
this is a, should be an interesting one. It's the game I'd be going to if I wasn't ill. Also, it would have worked out perfect. I could have dropped my girlfriend off at the airport and then gone to the game. Of course, I've had to miss live or do live from the stadium, which there are a couple of places you could do it here in L.A., but uh, would have certainly been fun to again, fun game to go to. No one's going to play Russell Wilson today. I am going to say play Russell Wilson today. That's where my first start. I know some. I know someone that's going to play. Is it you too? <laughs> I'll play, of course. Yeah. What I think that the, the narrative of them giving up on the season, or people haven't really been watching. Um, I, I do think that there is there is upside, and I think this Rams defense can give up big plays, and that is how he's going to thrive. Now, Russell Wilson hasn't put up a monster score in a while, and I understand his price is close enough to Hertz, where it makes Hertz makes more sense. Stafford makes more sense. Um, but I, I do, I, these will be my main quarterbacks. It'll be Wilson and followed by Stafford and it's only, it's, it's a lot, the ownership game, but I actually, I mean, when this game was on Sunday, I was going to play the Wilson stack a little bit. So I actually was already thinking along these lines as it, as it was, I worry a ton about getting involved in the Rams running game, but again, you don't have a lot of choices on this slate. Daryl Henderson is going to be super popular. Are we sure? <laughs> and as a Rams fan, I'm not sure. I know everybody's asking the same thing. Why do we think Daryl Henderson should be the running back and not Sony Michelle? And why, why wouldn't they at least somewhat split or use Henderson maybe for more third down work and Henderson at his ownership, which is going to be through the roof. I think he'll actually be the highest owned player on the slate. Um, it worries me a little bit. So I, I might be a little bit lower on the Henderson play. It's hard not to play him, but his, he's going to be really, really popular. And I could see Sony Michelle taking some of that work. So I like Sony Michelle as an interesting, bizarre pivot off of Henderson. Um, but it is going to be – we do have to play two running backs. So you're going to probably have to play either one of these guys or if you're not going to play – if you're not going to play uh, – what's his name? Um, the, well, the other thing you could do on the other side is instead play Rashad Penny, which we've seen ceilings a ceiling out of, but I don't know if that feels like the wisest thing to do. I mean, he did put up – you know, he had 16 for 137 and two touchdowns last time he played. Like, uh, maybe maybe that's the right answer, but he's going to be low owned, lower owned than the other ones. So I would have, uh, I would one of those three will be my second running back, and I will probably lean on the lower owned ones. Although I guess if I'm playing, um, if I'm playing Wilson, maybe it makes some sense to use some Henderson on the other side because Wilson's going to be low owned. Henderson at high owned as a run back on the other side, I think is interesting, and. I, I'm and that, that's what I'm doing at running back. What are you? What are your thoughts on these running backs? Yeah, running backs is not as not as uh, fun of a discussion as the wide receivers. Um, uh, and not even uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so we'll we'll get we'll we'll get we'll we'll dispense with the rest of the running backs. I, I basically agree with you. I think that I think I I, I think I'll I, I'll try like I said if I'm not playing um, uh, Sanders to play one of these like either Rashad Rashad Penny or Henderson or Michelle. You know what I mean? Like I, I really don't care which one of them I just hope one of them gets like 10 points. Cause I, I, I really don't want to play Sanders. Um, if anything, I'd probably play the other for Philly guy. Um, it was a Gainwell or something like that. Who's the other running back for Philly? Oh, it's there, Boston Scott. They, the only problem is they get Boston Scott Gainwell and, uh, and Jordan Howard. So it's just hard to know. Oh, I'm not doing guys. either of that. I'm not doing yeah, it's just too many guys for me. Yeah. And what you could do, I mean, you could, you could split your exposure to these secondary running backs in Philly and just hope one of them gets the touchdown, but, but it's going to be Hurts getting the touchdown. You know what I mean? It just is. Mm-hmm. Um, so okay. So so let let's talk. Let's talk about the receivers. Uh, you want you want to talk about the uh, the Rams? I'll talk about Seattle. Sure. Um, so uh, the Rams. Uh, I, mean, I appreciate you talking about Seattle because I'm actually interested to see what you got to say. I mean, look, we we still don't know about Odell officially, right? It's not official that he's out. At least that's what I, I've got. I, I I I don't have him out. Okay, I have him. I have him and with. Do they, they activated him from the COVID list? I know, and I, I, I don't know why I've got a zero projection on him. So I, I think that's going to keep Van Jefferson's ownership in check a little bit. Um, so I, I would be happy to just, excuse me, to lean Van Jefferson uh, over Odell if the ownership, if we think that's where the ownership goes. I think that's where it will go. But I would then, you know, I, I do like o- o- Odell in general. They are definitely making an effort to try and get him involved, and they've given him some goal line looks uh, in the end zone, which he hasn't really had in freaking forever um maybe the interesting thing to do is if you're going to play Stafford play both those guys and leave cup out that feels crazy but that's also going to be a very unusual build and we're talking about trying to win a two-game slate tournament so I, I like the I like the Odell play but I prefer I think I prefer the Van Jefferson so I have a Jefferson one cup two um 
Beckham three. And only reason I say cup two is I got to feel, see, see what I can do with my money. Cause I'm going to be playing some other, like, I'm going to be, obviously I'm going to play DK on the other side. Um, and that's pretty much it for me on that. I mean, I'm not going to use any other receivers from there. I do think that taking a shot on one of the, either Blanton, probably Blanton over Hopkins at a tight end is, is viable, but I don't know if you need to do it. See, I personally, I have, I have Odell projected. Um, okay. Yeah. So and he's projecting I, better I, than Van, right? I, uh, pretty close. Yep. Pretty close, actually. Actually, I, I have, well, value-wise, yeah, but I have, been, I have Ben Jefferson for slightly more fantasy points, you know? Um, uh, but, uh, so, so that is some, obviously some, something to monitor. Um, I don't have anything aside from the main guys. As far as Cup, the, pro, the, the difficulty in fading guys like that, and, and, and I thought about this, and guys like Devontae Adams as well, is that not only are they good, but it's chicken of the egg. They just scheme so many freaking plays for these guys. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they will literally run a play for a wide receiver. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and it's just hard to fade that when they're, they're going to get like minimum, I mean, minimum five catches. I mean, not actually five catches isn't enough, right? For guys like that. Well, I mean, but, literally but minimum. Bad. There's Cooper Cup has had exactly one game this year with only five catches and everything else right. significantly more pretty much. Right. Exactly. That's what I'm right. saying. So, right. So right. when you start off with five, you know, like it's, a, especially he's only 8,800. I mean, a two game slate, he's probably be 9,500. It's, 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 mm-hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a kind of a tough fade. Like I, and, but then again, he's going to be what? 80% owned. I mean, like, probably. You know, yeah. yeah. So, so in any case, yeah, if you want to try that, cool. You know, uh, uh, the the Seattle side. So with what's his name uh, out, you have all kinds of you have all kinds of fun stuff you could do. So the the, the easy thing you could do, which I, I can't imagine not see. I think that Metcalf is probably more of a lock than Cup actually, um, just because of like the different the different you know the game script pro- issue. You know what I mean? Like just in case you know the, the Rams are having a big league. You know the Rams like to run it out. You know what I mean? They like to they like to they like to get on that running game if they can. And, you know, so, so Metcalf is the play, but there are other guys, man. And, and Freddie Swain at 3,400. I mean, I think he's probably going to be popular, right. As, as kind of the second guy, but if you don't want to play Goddard, you could play Gerald, Gerald Everett. And then the guy, well, excuse me, Gerald Everett uh, is, is a, is a play, but the guy that I'm coming up with, I mean, more for showdown or whatever, like I said, if you didn't like the Alanis Morissette thing, is this is this Melissa Melissa Etheridge or whatever his name is? This um, D yeah. Eskridge um, for Seattle. Um, now he's only thirty. I mean, he's thirty three hundred on in in in, in main slate, but he's like really he's like nothing in like the showdowns. Yeah. So if you play that, I mean, for sure. But I think that he is is definitely well in play at thirty three hundred in the main slate also. Um, mm-hmm. So there's D. Eskridge, and it's not like P. Brown. His name is actually D. E. E. Eskridge. Um, so I like that, and I like uh, Freddie Swain. And then you should – I really think you should sprinkle the others. I think you should probably even sprinkle Penny Hart at 3K mm-hmm. um, because, look, the Rams are no, are no dummies, right? They're going to they're, they're gonna, they're gonna try to find a way to lock down uh, Metcalf, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and whether it, me- whether it means, you know, sending Ramsey out there or whatever it is, I mean, they're going to try their best. Ramsey's playing, I presume, right? As of right now, I assume that he is, but I have yeah. to double check. So, they're, I mean, look, look, the Rams are, are, are at least somewhat sharp, but they're, they're going to say, listen, I'd rather have any heart beat me than freaking DJ Metcalf, right? So, so they are going to they are going to bracket him if possible. So I think that if you, you're supposed to sprinkle these 3K guys, given, number one, the fact that this could be a game script where they're coming from behind, number two, I think that Wilson's a good play anyway, um, and you've seen how many of these Seattle Rams games have you seen? You just don't know which, which game is going to show up. You know, whenever right, it's a right. 51 point total, it's 17, 13. And right. whenever it's 42 point total, right. it's 59 to 51. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, so, right. so, so if you get Russell Wilson as the lowest, not maybe not lowest owned, but what like the third owned quarterback at under 20%, that's humanly possible. You just going to have to play him, you know, right. and, and if you play him, you're going to, sure, you're going to play Metcalf, but you're going to want to play other guys. So mm-hmm. I have no problem sprinkling all those guys from Seattle. Yeah, I, I, I like it. Um, I, I, so just to D. Eskridge is a rookie they like quite a bit, a really talented kid, um, more of the deep ball threat, a big play threat than, than maybe Swain is. Swain a little bit more safe, but also has, a, has some big playability as well. Uh, think about those guys taking up some of that role from, uh, Lock, from Lockett being out. 
I could see one of like it wouldn't shock me if one of them has like a really big game. Like if this was a big slate, I think I'd be trying to have some interest in both these guys. Yeah. Um, so I totally agree. I think Eskridge will be like one of the he's probably gonna be one of my popular players on um on the showdown. You would um, right? Yeah, but I, I but I think you know I, on the regular slate, he's gonna just because of a, a tiny little difference in projection, he's gonna be lower owned than Freddie Swain. Right. Um, so I, I think in, in a in a Russell here's here's the way I would I would put it from a game strategy standpoint. If a Russell Wilson stack, if I, that's what I'm playing, I think I'm likely going to play Metcalf and Swain. If I'm playing a Stafford stack and and with wait with uh, with Cup on the other side. Now if I'm playing a Stafford stack to try and get different, I'll play Beckham and Van Jefferson, and then I'll run it back. You know maybe I'll put D Eskridge in that one along as one of my you know two because my flex is going to be a receiver. Um, just to be a little bit different, you know what I'm saying? Um, cause I do think that, that trying to play cup in the Stafford stacks is going to be the obvious thing to do, but maybe if you play your Wilson stack and you use that, you use cup in that one with the two more obvious receivers from Seattle, I think that's kind of, seems to me like a little bit of a better way to go. Um, and D Eskridge, you're playing for the home run threat against Stafford against the, the Ram stack that you're making on the other side with cup and Jefferson. Just an interesting way to go, and then you pay up for, for the other. For, for example, I mean, I have my, this 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 build right right here. This yeah. one has has nothing earth shattering except for the fact that okay, so this is Wilson with Metcalf and Estridge with a cup run back. It's got Goddard, it fades Sanders, and you and you can do whatever you want in these other mm -hmm. whatever you want. But 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 you can you can play anything you want in these other in these other positions. And if you do something like this, for example, I mean, you know, we say this all the time, and we never end up actually doing it. But but you can leave a carload of money on the table. I think on this slate, um, yeah. if the second best receiver on Seattle is like under four K, you know, for example, I mean, you 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 almost not mostly have to, but I think that most of a lot of the optimals are actually going to have uh, uh, money left on the table. I don't know, maybe you know you know what they're going to do now. They're probably going to want you to play Odell or Bam Jefferson also. But um, right. I don't know. We'll see though. It's interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. I, and that's, that looks like a familiar build to me as well. Um, yeah. you, you can, I mean, look, Metcalf, I'm sorry, Devontae Smith and Terry McLaurin in the first games are going to be the own receivers. Okay. But if you wanted to get a little bit creative with it, um, maybe playing Jalen Rager or, right. or uh, Adam Humphreys would be a way you could get, a, get off of some of the swain. I don't want to say chalk, but like, you know, of, of the low end of the cheapo chalk um, to get different. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reiterate something we also said uh, the other day is, remember, when we get into December, now we're in late December, the differences between these, these cold weather games and these warm weather games are really, really dramatic. And, and, and you know, it's not like it's two degrees out there in the Northeast, but it's, it's pretty bad out there. And you know, Washington coming into Philadelphia, they're both coming. I mean, Washington's coming off of COVID stuff. It's freaking cold out. It's a night game, which, which certainly doesn't help. You know, it's going to be even colder. I mean, this game could legit be like 13 to 10 or something like that. Right, right. And and, and this this Rams game is in the dome, whatever that's called. In the dome. dome, yeah, in the dome. It's a dome, and you have you have talented players like all over the freaking place between Metcalf and 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 Wilson and the the whole Rams onslaught. You know what I mean? Like that game could outscore the the Philly game by 30 real life points. You know, yeah, and yeah. and I would have no problem like just throwing like a Goddard a Washington defense and you know what I mean? And just, just overload the re the whole second game or something like that. I mean, you could totally do that. Yeah. I like that idea. I mean, we say the second game, but these games start at the same time, don't they? Right. No, I mean, I mean, game, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's weird though. Like, I mean, I, I don't remember ever seeing that at the NFL, like right. I, on a, on a, right. well, certainly on a Tuesday. Right. Right. Um, by the way, the NFL is absolutely loving this, regardless of what they say about anything. I know it sounds horrible because it's all COVID really delayed and everything. Oh, yeah. They're basically having games every night of the week, it seems like these days, and it's probably going to happen the rest of the season. And, Dude, they and DK with the one million for first. I like it. Let's I go. Know. Let's go. All right. I'm in. All right, guys. Well, good luck to everybody out there. Um, Sheets, good job, and we will see each other. We will see you. So, what do you around. think? You know what? I think that um, about six fifteen to six thirty because okay. because I think it's more important to get the updated NBA information right, and we'll have than, it than than the NFL because I think we'll be pretty clear on the NFL. Yep. So we'll do six thirty. We'll you know we'll we'll touch on the we'll do, do majority NBA, but we'll we'll touch on even if we go a little bit. Yeah, yeah. we'll go a little bit past the NFL lot. That's fine. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so we'll do six thirty. All right. Good luck, everybody. Uh, see you guys at the top leaderboards, I hope.